mistakes, all your errors, all your self-indulgences, everything you do wrong with writing, that's what your style is. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, style isn't sort of what you excel at, it's actually everything you get wrong. Uh, but that's sort of really what, what gives you your style, what makes your book unique. Uh, it's really your voice. Um, and these little self-indulgent bits and pieces you sometimes find in, in a novel. Uh, if it's all self-indulgent, you can't really read it. But um, these little bits, I sometimes think of a novel as sort of a walk through a wood. And sometimes you just find something on the path. And it's nothing to do with the path, but it's just a cool, beautiful thing. But novel has space for this. The novel is a baggy pair of... Uh, Cargo pants, you know, these things are my gas. Yeah, they've got lots of pockets, they're looking for, for air travel. Um, whereas a short story is kind of these tight, curvy things that cyclists wear. Um, <laughs> they, 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 you know, no short story has space for that. Death to a short story, but a novice, why well, I like the form so much. Um, baggy. Icing on cake here and there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get down to the novel, the story, and get some facts and figures straight to begin with. Sure. Um, it's set in Dejima. Um, how on earth did you find out that Dejima actually existed? Um, it was another happy accident, something else had got wrong. Um, uh, I was, it was 1994, my first winter in Japan. I didn't have any money. I couldn't afford to fly home to be with my mother and father at Christmas. Um, <laughs> so uh, I went um, backpacking around the west of Japan in Kyushu, and that included going to Nagasaki. Uh, and it was about 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, and I was getting really hungry, but I didn't have any money, so the lonely planet said, go to Chinatown, which was good advice for anyone. Um, but um, so I could use hostels a long way out of Nagasaki. Um, and so I took the streetcar in, and I couldn't read the street signs very well then, so I, I, I got off at the wrong stop. Instead of Chinatown, I got off at stop at Dejima. Uh, it's a little bit inland because of land reclamation schemes that pushed the shore uh, out a few hundred metres. Um, and uh, oh, this doesn't look like Chinatown. And so I was walking around a bit, um, trying to find some cheap food. Most of my life has been motivated by the search for cheap food. I thought I got mad with it, actually. Very <laughs> uh, motivated for great novels. <laughs> hunger, yeah. Yeah, I work for New Townsend Hunger. Very erudite literary joke there. <laughs> you both got hung up and knew that. Um, and. But yeah, so I got. No um, food, but? No food, but some museums, or just one or two museums, uh, reconstructed buildings, obviously, because of uh, being Nagasaki. Uh, but some buildings that looked like they were from an earlier century, very pure white uh, storehouses. And. Uh, uh, they were on the site of Dejima, and uh, actually, in the 16 years since then, Dejima has been largely restored. So, if you do enjoy the book, you can go to Nagasaki, walk around the location. Um, but yes, uh, this is before I was a writer, before I was published, before I sold the TV and said goodbye to my social life. Uh, but uh, even then, I knew. These mighty global themes, east and west, this strange splinter of a colony, but not quite. It was more like a prison island. Uh, the Dutch were allowed to stay on a small island. Uh, all the historical sources, of course, are Dutch, so they say it's about the size of Down Square in Amsterdam. Very small, uh, long, thin curve, just out in the harbour connected to the mainland by a bridge about the width of this stage. Um, and uh, about 10, 15 Dutch guys had to be men uh, were stationed there. Uh, trading season was about May, June through to uh, September, October. That's when the ship came. Uh, the men were turned off the ship. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Just the people bringing the goods onto the shore, uh, onto the Dejima, and then people taking uh, the goods back to the ship. We're talking 1700s? Uh, we're talking, yeah, uh, about 1650 through to, no, a bit earlier, about 1640 through to 1852 or so. Um, mm-hmm. I think about 18 years. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, the Dutch were fell off. Uh, they were prisoners, and the three people allowed on, the three types of people were the, uh, the interpreters, because ordinary people weren't allowed to learn Dutch officially, uh, the merchants who did business with the Dutch, and the prostitutes who also did business with the Dutch. Um, so everyone knows Japan was shut, but it wasn't quite. There was this little cat flap yeah. through which ideas and trade could come and go, could pass through. If, if, if I can't find the half decent novel in there, I'm not much of a writer. Uh, and what happened? It took a while before it got written? Yes, it did. Um, I think I'm the, uh, the quiet and more intelligent part of me realised that it would be a very difficult book to write. Uh, so uh, it was it is number five in my oeuvre. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I'm. Maybe this is uh, just me thinking retrospectively, uh, but uh, I think maybe I knew that I needed to learn more about writing novels before I tried to write this book because uh, it was. What made it so daunting? (sighs) Dejima was an environment manufactured by the Japanese to prevent uh, infection, to prevent uh, their own strict, conservative, totalitarian state, which the authorities liked exactly as it was, thank you very much. It was a, they, they wanted the trade, but they didn't want the foreign influence. They didn't want ideas coming, they didn't want Christianity coming in, because that went horribly wrong the first time. Uh, they didn't want ideas about democracy, they didn't want people uh, questioning why we have to spend our lives in misery while a small number spend their lives in luxury. Um, uh, through the Dutch they knew what was happening in the world, they knew about the revolutions in the 18th century. So Dejima was designed to keep all of that out. Uh, everybody, all the servants, many of the interpreters, they were also spies. They were and and, and, uh, and they were dependent upon finding infringements uh, of the many rules which they could report uh, for, in order to get paid. Um, Report so to the Japanese elite and uh, the powers that be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, everything that a novel needs was excluded from Dejima. The, uh, the little quiet the corners where your male and female romantic lead can quietly go to consummate their relationship. On Dejima, not a chance. It would never happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, there was nothing for the Dutch to do outside the trading season, to, uh, apart from drink and gamble uh, and have sex with prostitutes. Uh, now, the third of those is quite different novels, but the first two, <laughs> no at all. Uh, my wife made it more difficult as well by, by warning me that uh, uh, if I wrote another novel where a Japanese geisha sees a tall, blonde Westerner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tall and blonde. I'm going to behave like an idiot. Uh, she, she, she warned me that... Uh, that, that, that uh, She'd stop reading you? Worse. <laughs> <laughs>